I just first of all want to take the opportunity first of all to welcome uh, all of our uh, volunteers. We can see that we have some people as young as eight or nine years old and we have seniors here and everything in between. Uh, thank you so much to all of the young girls, the young boys, uh, the men and the women and the seniors that have all come out uh, you know, to welcome uh, Justin Trudeau who is a very, very great friend, uh, not only of myself but I think of the entire community here in Brampton, a great friend of so many people from various different communities as well, but I think a great friend of many, many Canadians. And uh, Justin and I have had the chance to work together in the House of Commons on many issues that are important to the constituents of Brampton Springdale, whether it's on the issues of health care and ensuring that we reduce wait times and get more doctors and get more nurses, whether it's in regards to ensuring that we have great accessibility and affordability for child care, whether it's in regards to the issue of immigration and ensuring that we actually start to reunite mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters. You know, when we talk about the issue of immigration, because Justin has been our critic, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for this uh, file, we have all spoken up in the House of Commons because immigrants have been the foundation of our great country. And you take a look around this room, all of us and many of us that are here today are all the sons and daughters of immigrants or immigrants ourselves that have come to Canada. And as my mom always says, they came to Canada out of curiosity, but stayed for the future of their children. So when the Conservative Party talks about the issue of wanting to go out and reach into <coughs> ethnic communities, the fact of the matter is, when when it comes to delivering, they continue to fail. When experts tell you that it's going to take 13 years to reunite mothers and fathers, this is not a party that believes in families or believes in immigrants in Canada. And this is why we must ensure that on May the 2nd, when we make that choice, it is going to be a very clear choice. The choice is really going to be about the type of future that we want, that you want, for our children, our families, and our country. And having Justin here today, we all know that he's a great inspiration to young people. We must ensure that we engage and empower the youth of our nation and invest in young people. And I think that Justin and I will agree that we were so incredibly proud of one of the initiatives of our leader, Michael Ignatieff, and the Liberal Party with the Learning Passport that speaks to investing in young people. Instead of wasting $30 billion on fighter jets and sending out warplanes, we must ensure that we invest that in young people. And Michael and the Liberal Party's announcement of giving four to six thousand dollars to every student to have the opportunity, you know, to go out to college, to go to university, speaks. It speaks to our investment and our commitment to not only the youth, but the future of our great country. And this is why there is going to be a clear choice of spending and wasting $30 billion in fighter jets or investing it in issues like child care and health care and youth and education. And to ensure that we make this a reality, we need the support of each and every one of you. A great role model, a great inspiration for the youth. I'm proud to have him as a friend. We are proud to be um, a part of a party that is speaking about youth, about investing in, in families. And so to all of you, we want to give Justin a very big, warm, heartfelt welcome. Thank you, Ruby. Uh, like she said, thank you all of you for coming out this morning. Thank you for being here. Thank you to the media for uh, sharing this moment with us and making sure that a lot more people uh, get to hear about the wonderful energy and the wonderful work being done by Ruby and her extraordinary team of volunteers. Um, it's a real pleasure to be here. Uh, this is uh, sort of the, the one day I'm taking off from my, uh, my riding, uh, my riding works. I have a tough fight in Papineau uh, to come to Toronto. I'm going to be in Vancouver tomorrow, uh, and then it's back to, to keep fighting on the ground. But one of the things that was really important for me was to come uh, and show my support to Ruby, because uh, she's a, an important and valued member of our team, and she's, as she mentioned, uh, a good personal friend. Uh, so I'm really pleased to be here to talk about this really important election. I mean, a lot of Canadians are sort of going, oh, do we really need this election? The fact is, yes, we do. Yes, we do, because right now is when we have to decide what kind of country we want. What kind of Canada are we building for our kids, for our grandkids? What kind of world do we want them to grow up in? Now, Canada's been doing well over the past years. We know that. Our economic foundations are strong, our commodities are there, 
Our people are hardworking and present and value driven. And it means that this country has done well. Indeed, if you ask people through this recession, has Canada done well through these, this recession? People say, yeah, it's done well through this recession. But if you turn around and ask them, have you, has your family done well through this recession? Canadians say, yeah, no, not so much. So there's a sense that the country's okay. The country's okay because of liberal decisions around banks, liberal slaying of deficit, liberal economic management, liberal long-term investments in health care, in immigration settlement services, in a huge range of things. But right now, Canadians are suffering. And the Liberal Party has made a very simple calculation. We are committed to once again, as we always end up doing, clean up this mess the Conservatives have left our economy in, left us with the largest deficit in Canadian history, we will eliminate that. So we're going to have difficult choices to make. One of those choices, however, wasn't all that difficult. The Liberal Party is committed to reducing corporate, inc corporate taxes. We were the ones who started reducing corporate taxes. It's a way to keep our economy strong. We agree. But only when we're in surplus. Only when the country is running well. We were the ones who reduced the economy. Uh, re reduced the corporate taxes down to 18%. Right now we're saying hold off on those. Free up $6 billion that instead of giving to our most profitable companies, the 5%, not the small and medium-sized businesses, not the hard-working Canadian families, but the most profitable companies, we're going to hold off on giving them money that we're borrowing right now because we're in deficit. And those $6 billion, we're going to start investing them where they're needed, where they're needed right now and where they're needed for the long term. That's investing in our young people investing in recognizing our elders, investing in giving those Canadians who are living in that sandwich generation where they're dealing with kids who are staying at home longer and parents who need more support and are coming back to home, the resources to succeed. Understanding that the choices we make as a democracy on how we choose to spend our money leads to whether or not our economy is strong. So when people say, oh, yes, we know Stephen Harper isn't exactly the most democratic of guys. Oh, we know he's not a really nice, generous leader who plays well with others. But he seems to be fairly competent. Well, the problem is Ruby and I have front row seats on the fact that he's not particularly competent. He's making decisions around untethered fighter jets that we don't need at the cost of over $30 billion. And the price tag, every time we check, keeps going up because they're completely out, of, out to lunch up. They're spending tens of billions of dollars on new prisons. Even though crime is decreasing in Canada, the conservative playbook is play up fears and insecurities and say you're going to punish bad guys. The Liberal Party has a different approach to that. Because punishing bad guys hasn't worked in the United States, or else LA, Detroit, and Houston would be the safest countries in the world, safest cities in the world, we're going to invest where it actually makes a difference so that we have less fast bad guys to punish which means investing in families, investing in schools, investing in social services, not investing in mega prisons. And on immigration, the Liberal Party has always understood that immigration is not just about bringing over economic units, workers to contribute to build to pay taxes. Immigration is about nation building. And that means, that means restoring family reunification balance to what it was under a liberal government. Every single year, Jason Kenney, as Minister of Immigration, Canada has accepted less parents 
and grandparents. <laughs> Every single year, Jason Kenney has been Minister of Immigration. Canada has accepted less parents and grandparents. I say that twice because he will trot out numbers. He will talk about the fact that we've accepted more immigrants last year than in 90 years of Canadian history. And that's true. And we think that's great. However, at the same time as they're doing that, they're cutting, for example, immigration for parents and grandparents from New Delhi in more than half. They have cut $53 million from settlement services much of it around here in the GTA, at a time where we're allowing in, welcoming in, more Canadians than ever before. Canada only is successful if our new Canadians arriving here are also successful. And they can only be successful if we give them the tools, the language training, the integration opportunities, the job experience, that's what these settlement services are all about. And the fact that this government cuts when we need to be investing demonstrates that they are not really in it for our immigrant communities. The other issue is that they've become very, very good at strategically targeting particular groups. We saw that with the very ethnic voters uh, strategy that was, that was mistakenly released. The issue becomes, for these people, picking and choosing amongst communities is an effective way of getting elected. You know what? It is. You can get elected by carefully dividing people, by counting votes in one community, pandering to their needs, ignoring other people. And if you're one of those communities that is benefiting from that largesse, well, that's great for you. That may make you want to vote conservative. And that's exactly what the approach is by these conservatives. They're transactional in their regards to communities. If you give us your support, we'll build you a new community center. We'll fund this festival of yours. We'll put an extra visa office in your hometown. That transactional nature of picking winners and, and, and losers according to strategic election politics undermines the very strength and justice of what Canada has achieved. When we play up different groups' identities for strategic gain, we are reducing the amount of fairness and the principles that make this country the greatest country on earth. We have achieved the one thing that countries around the world are striving for in the 21st century. We've figured out how to get along. We are a country that is strong not in spite of our differences, but because of those differences. And our capacity to build bridges between communities rather than divide, to look at the values that unite us and bind us together, that we all share, that is how we build a strong Canada. And that choice in Brampton Springdale is only Ruby Dalla and across the country is only the Liberal Party of Canada. Yes,